All right, in this video today, we're going to change a seal kit impeller on the PL series pump. We're using a PL30 pump. Um, all the PL series pumps are pretty much the same, so it'll apply to everything in the PL series. First thing we want to do is make sure that the power is off to your pump. Go disconnect it and lock it out or shut it off at the boiler. It depends on what, uh, what your system is like. Then the next thing you want to do is you want to close your service valves. If you don't have service valves, you're going to have to drain the whole boiler. Once you get to this point, we want to loosen the four bolts on the volute body here and just loosen them because it's still under pressure. So we'll loosen them, put a bucket underneath the pump or a towel, and then we'll proceed to pull the pump out once the pressure is relieved. Okay, I've got, the, uh, I've got the screws loose here. And if you notice, the pump is wiggling a little bit. So the water has drained out, the pressure is relieved. We're going to go ahead and remove the four bolts and set it down and start working on it. All right, I'll remove this fourth bolt. And you want to save the bolts, screws, whatever you want to call them, because you're going to reuse those. And we'll pull the pump straight back. And that's all the PL looks like. Now we'll remove the impeller and we'll get to the seal kit. We'll clean things up a bit. Now, to get the impeller off, all the PL series pumps are threaded. The impeller has a thread on it. No keys, no nothing. And it's kind of a goofy way to remove it, but you need a screwdriver. And what you do is, Josh, I'll show you here. I don't know if you're gonna be able to get it with the camera. On the back side here, you have some fins inside the motor. So we're going to take the screwdriver and we're going to insert it in here. And then Josh, I'm going to turn it on its side. Now that's going to stop the shaft from rotating, okay? Then we're going to grab the impeller and we're going to spin it until it locks. If I can catch it here. Okay, I caught it. Now, just simply twist it like you're unscrewing a cap off of a pickle jar or something and then you'll see the seal kit sitting behind it and it's a lot different than a lot of other seal kits. All right, impeller's off. Now if your impeller's in good shape, you can reuse it. For the sake of the video today, I'll just show you how to change it. And when you get to this point, if you are replacing the impeller and not the seal kit, make sure you order a volute body gasket for this pump because the impeller part box does not come with a gasket. The seal kit comes with a volute body gasket, but the impeller doesn't. All right, we've got the impeller off. I'm going to keep it because it's brand new, but we're going to replace that also. So I'll set it aside. Now we're going to get into the seal kit, and these mechanical seals on these PL pumps are very small, and they can be difficult to work with. Because we're replacing the seal, we don't care what we're going to do to the old one. So I'll just take it off in pieces, and I'll show you the individual pieces when I go to put it on instead of when I'm taking it off. All right, so we've got the mechanical side of the seal taken off. Now I'm gonna flip it up here, Josh. This is the bottom piece, along with the rubber O-ring that's in there. I have to get that out. So we'll just take the screwdriver and we're gonna work our way around it. And like I said, if, if this is a used pump, you don't care what you do to it. This is a brand new one, and I probably might damage a brand new seal, but I have to replace it for you anyways. So. Just dig that rubber O-ring out of there, along with the stationary side of the seal. And it might chip like that. And of course I broke it. Now when you get to this part, you want to get the boot out also because you get a new boot with the stationary piece. Okay. All right. We're going to throw all this away because you're not going to reuse any of these parts. At this point in time, we'll inspect the cover plate, clean it up a little bit. Obviously, this is new, but I'll clean it up a little bit, and then we'll put the seal kit back in it along with the impeller. All right, we've got the old seal kit thrown away and cleaned up in front of us. Now we're going to inspect the cover plate and the shaft. It does not have a sleeve, it has a collar, so it's not replaceable. 
And of course, mine is new, but what you want to do is inspect this area here for pitting or decay. If it is, you're going to need a new pump. You also want to inspect the shaft right here where the seal rides. If there's any pitting or decay, you're going to need a new pump. But for the sake of the video, it's brand new, so we'll start putting the seal kit in it. And I got a little bit of stuff in here, but I'll clean it out before we get into it. So I'll go, go over and grab the seal. And I'll set the pump aside, and I want to show you how this comes out of the part box. So Josh, I'll lay this out for you. This is your volute gasket. These are the instructions, and for the first time, Doing a video for a BNG pump, I'm going to tell you to keep the instructions. Not necessarily follow them, but you can keep them. For the simple fact, if you look on the back page, Josh, if you want to shoot this for them, the back page shows you right here the layout of the seal as you put it on the pump shaft. So for once, you can keep it. Now set those aside. This is what the seal comes in as a little paper envelope. I'm just going to dump them out here. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you the order that they go in to put it on the pump. So from left to right, the left side being the pump, you want to first start with the stationary side of the seal, which will go on the pump. Then you want to go with the carbon side of the seal. And then you want to go with the O-ring. Then you want to go with the O-ring washer. And then you want to go with the spring. Now the spring has to go a specific direction and it'll go like this. And then the pressure collar that goes over the top of the carbon side and if you notice, Josh, I'll try to line this up for the camera. It's got three grooves in it. When you put this on the pump shaft, these three tabs have to meet these three grooves like so. And you'll see how difficult it can be when I start to get into it. All right, I've got the seal kit laid out. I'm going to bring my soap in. And we're going to start putting each individual part on because you can't put it on put together and you'll see why here shortly. So the pump is brought in, it's all cleaned up and ready. First thing you want to do is soap up the stationary part. And you can put it wherever you want, doesn't matter. Again, you can touch these things and you're not going to hurt them. A little bit of soap in the cavity where the boot goes, so it slides right in. All right, we'll plop it down over the top and then push it into place. Make sure it bottoms out. And if you notice, there's soap all over the place. And I'll clean it up before I start the other side of the seal. All right, now we'll start putting it back together piece by piece. <clears throat> I'm going to hold it at about a 45 degree angle and I'll be moving it quite a bit. So. Josh, you'll have to edit or do whatever it takes to make it comfortable for people to watch. We're going to grab the carbon first. I'm going to put some soap on here before because the depth can get a little different when you start adding things. And that's on the rays of the shaft. I'm going to drop the carbon on. That's going to meet the stationary part. Okay, next is the little black O-ring. Now this is going to fit snug. So a couple of fingers, and slide it onto the raised collar on the shaft. Now, get it inside the ceramic part the best you can, because this is what's going to hold the ceramic part also with the collar on the sleeve. The little brass ring goes next. We'll slide that on and push down on that and that'll help that O-ring stay in place inside the carbon. 
I'm going to prop it up a little bit here, Josh. I'll do it this way. Okay, and I like to take a screwdriver and on the brass ring itself, just a little bit of leverage to keep that O-ring down on the collar and inside the carbon side of the seal. Now, I'm going to remove the screwdriver. I'm going to hold this with one finger in place. Now, the spring. I was talking about this earlier. The tapered side goes in like so to hold this brass ring in place once I get the collar on. So we'll put the spring on. And here comes the fun part. Now the collar that you have to match up with the three notches in the carbon. Make sure all three of these tabs are on the outside of the spring. Now we're going to push down on it and make sure it goes over the carbon. And Josh, I don't know if you can see the notches in the carbon. And this is the fun part. We're going to take our impeller while holding this in place and we're going to try to get it started. Alright, it doesn't want to get started. So I'll take it off and inspect it again real quick. And if you notice the brass popped up, like I said, this is not going to be fun. So we'll compress it back down. Now something that you can try is use a screwdriver, a flat one preferably, and hold that spring in place so the tabs stay around the carbon. Put your impeller on and slowly work it onto the shaft. Okay. And while you're spinning this, make sure that the motor isn't spinning. But as long as you get the impeller started, you should be in good shape. Now I'm going to take the screwdriver. And I like doing it this way because it's already up and I don't want to tip it sideways. So I'm going to go in the breather part of the motor. And I'll spin it here, Josh, Josh, you can see that. And you can see the front side of the motor has little tabs on it also. So I'm going to make sure the shaft isn't spinning as I sp spin the impeller onto the shaft. Now, as I do this, Josh, if you can get a picture of this in here, you can see the brass ears over the top of the carbon. You have to make sure that those brass ears stay in those grooves while you're tightening the impeller. If they come out, it's not going to spin properly and it'll probably leak on you. But if you notice, the tabs are partially on the carbon and aligned so I can keep tightening the impeller. And the motor hasn't locked for me yet. <laughs> there we go. All right. And if you notice, as I'm screwing the impeller on, the brass collar is carrying the carbon around in a circle, which means it's locked in place and we're just about done. All right, my impeller is tight. Now I'm just going to give it a little tweak. You don't want to over tighten it. Okay, so it's all done. A little tedious, not terrible. So we'll check the volute body, make sure that's cleaned up, get the volute gasket in place, and we'll put it back in. All right, we've got the pump ready to install into the volute. Everything's tight and ready to go. Now what we're going to do is we're going to inspect the volute that's in line, make sure it's clean. And if you notice, the old gasket is still in place. Never reuse the gaskets. Always use a new one. So I'll take it out, throw it away, and we'll take our new one that came with the seal kit and we'll put it into place. And if you have a tough time with it staying in place, you can use a little bit of the soap that you were using on the seal kit to make it stick a little bit. 
and that's all you do with that. All right, the flute body gasket's in place. We're gonna take the pump, we're gonna put it into place and bolt it up. Now, if you remember, my electrical box was up. That's why I didn't mark any part of the volute because I knew the electrical box had to go up. If you want to take a magic marker and draw a line before you take it apart so you don't forget which way it goes back in, you can do that too. Real easy. Slide it into place. Take your time doing this because you don't want to kink that rubber ring. Kind of line up your bolts like so. Now I like to lean on it a little bit to hold it, and I'll get my bolts and just wiggle them into place. You might want to clean the soap off your fingers so you can grip the screws. I like to do them opposite also. Keep an eye on this gap when you start to tighten and try to keep it as equal as you can as you move around the pump to tighten it. Like I said, opposite. I'm gonna move from here to the lower other side, keeping an eye on the gap. All right, it's nice and snug. Now don't hook up your electrical yet. What you wanna do is slowly open your service valves and check and make sure that it's not leaking, okay? Once you get them open and it's not leaking, you can connect your electrical and then you're ready to pump some water. And I'm going to smoke. <laughs>